Yo, what's up, dudes? Uh, got the 50s uh, reissue Strat, the uh, Mexi made 50s reissue. They call it the Classic Series, 50s edition. They make a 60s, too. 60s would have Rosewood, three-ply pickguard, a little bit different voiced pickups. Um, this is the 50s, brighter pickups, maple uh, fingerboard. And uh, single-ply pickguard. Fewer screws than the 60s. Anyway, enough about the guitar. Let's um, let's try out some clear tone strings. So, I think a lot of people have asked for a like a restringing video, and I figured maybe we could. I'll put my coffee over here. Maybe we could do a restringing video. And uh, what I first thing I like to do is take all the posts along the you know all the because I don't care if it's in tune now, and I make them all vertical. So I can use my string, and I, I leave them vertical. And I just do it until, see, they pop. They pop off like that. You just want to go till they pop. Some will take longer than others. This is one of the worst um, restrings I've ever seen. Whoever restrung this before, it was ridiculous. Oh, I'm hitting all this junk here. Move this over. Get, make it a little quieter. There we go. Now some people will say you should never take all your strings off at once. Yeah, if you have a Floyd Rose, you're probably asking for trouble. Though there are ways you can do that. Floyd Rose, I tend to do one string at a time because it's a little easier. But these, I always take off all the strings. Uh, I want to go a few inches from the end, usually over the middle pickup and I cut them. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to leave a little bit of length in case I have to poke a string through, right? Instant pokers. I never pull the string, the whole string through because it's too curled up at the top. And if I did that, then I take these, I want to keep them as a bundle, line them all up at the top. See, like this, I'll get them all lined up and then loop them and loop them again. And now I have my old strings right there in a bundle. I want to take my old string ends out. Of course, the wound strings come out much easier because they're just a little stiffer. And sometimes you'll find that these don't, that the, um, you know, the, the holes in the block don't exactly line up with the exit holes on the back plate this plate right here let's see if we can get one out on camera Is that one coming out no, it's being it's being difficult sometimes these really do oh there goes one see it and boom right out we have one more that's just being it's being temperamental see that one's actually stuck in there so I'll take my one of my cuts here. I'll try and show it to the camera and I'll put that in there. See that? And I just knock that through. That's why I... and there it is. So that's why I leave these little these little bits here. If everyone could see those, I'll hold them up. I'm running a, a three camera system. And then uh, I usually take a like an old rag. I keep a lot of old T-shirts, towels, uh, anything that no one really wants to use anymore. And uh, I'll keep them. This one's been around for actually a couple of years now. And I'll just take that and I'll just wipe down the guitar, clean it up. Might as well have it open. And sometimes I'll make all the tuning pegs horizontal and just give that like a little wipe right there and clean them up a little bit. All right, good. You know, if, if you had polish and you wanted to go nuts, you could do a little polishing. I like the GHS polish. It's in a black bottle with a red label. Got a fan of that for years. I would use it now, but I ran out. All right, these bags are particularly strong. Uh, so usually what I'll do is be sure there's no string there. Feel in the bag. 
and then I'll take my snips in the upper corner I'll start a little tear and then it tears right open there they are my bundle of strings they're color-coded um, on the bag it will tell you what, what each color is so don't rely on other companies they tend to use different color codes. So even if you know of another company that uses color coding, you know, you can't say, well, this color is always the low E. Now I just gotta get these opened up. There's these two, there it is. Just like that. And I like to go low to high. Just pick a spot and go, I like to go with the low E first and there's my low E. We'll see if we can get these. These are kind of kind of wrapped up here. That's all right. I got it. That's definitely the low E. Wait, coffee. Mm. So how's your day going? Yeah. I feel like I just got nothing done today. So I feel like I'm. I'm accomplishing something here. You ever had one of those days, you know? So, okay, now we have this, this headstock here. This is a slotted vintage Fender tuning peg. I'll usually make all my pegs vertical right now because I'm gonna be using the winder and I want the maximum space between each one. So usually what I do is I sort of get a feel for about the length, right? And then maybe I'll get about a hand width because this is the low E, I won't spread it out. I want I don't want too much. Got to be a little careful. Uh, maybe about that. And then I'll take my string cutter. And I'll cut the top. And there's a hole in the middle of this slot. Goes in the hole. And then wrap it around. And wind it up. Now, you want these windings to work their way down. If you find the windings are working their way up the post, you, you, you can't have that happen. And it's hard to sort of go back once you've started. So you, right from the start, you just have to make sure you have your finger on there just a little bit. I'm pulling, I'm gripping the string and I'm pulling it. I don't want this to get loose here. I need constant tension on the post, okay? Without constant tension on the post, it's just gonna fly back out again. So I have this tension on here now, put my finger down. And we just start to wind it. Just let the winder do its work. And we, you know, if we're happy with, we'll get, you know, I, I like to get like two or three windings in the low E. Three if you can. You don't want too many windings because then they're gonna, you're gonna run out of space and they're gonna have to work their way back up and then windings on top of windings, more room for slack, more room for it to get loose, more room for it to go out of tune. You want that winding nice and tight against the post, and you want to start from the middle and work your way down. You always want it to pull down because you want a little bit of pressure on the nut. If it's too high, that's why they have string trees, right? To make sure that that string is getting pulled down and it's getting pulled down over the nut, right? Uh, Gibson uses a, a tilt back, uh, Fender uses an offset, and that offset, you know, you have to definitely make sure that you're, you're getting some tension on the nut here. All right, next one. Ah, I don't want these to fall. Come on, strings. Stay right there. This is the A string. Again, it goes in through the back. Make sure it's all the way in. And sometimes, <laughs> especially on a Strat, it can get stuck on the plastic plate or it can get stuck on the um, side of the block and it's not all the way through and you start to wind it up and it goes pop and it gets much looser and you're like, ugh, I didn't plan for that. So again, we're gonna sort of get about a hand length width at the, at the neck pickup and gauge our length. All right, give that a little cut. Oop. It's like, geez, that got shorter. Wrapped around the around the uh, trim bar. Okay, again, it's going to go in to the side. 
and over. So down, and you want this slot to be moved like up, usually like straight away from you, like this way, like almost like a, it's at like one o'clock or two o'clock. And then you pull down to the side. And again, I am gripping this. I'm holding this and I'm pulling tension on this. I don't want it to fly off there. And just let the winder do its work. And by the time we're done, now they may not be all together. You're like, oh, my windings are all separated. They will work their way together. They won't stay separated for long, especially if you give a little, little tug. All right. All right. Well, we're getting there. Last of the wound strings. And we're cranking right through it. up, over, again we're trying to get roughly a hand width, maybe spread it out a little bit more if you want it slightly more windings, roughly about there. You don't have to be perfect, but you, you know, you want to make an effort because if, if, if your windings are too loose on the headstock and they're sort of in chaos and all over the place, you'll get slippage. And that slippage will translate into you know, tuning more, usually on stage. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, what's our, let me go to my handy dandy guide. It is Well, the G is green, that would make sense, right? And there it is, and we pull this out into the back. Now be careful what hole you push it through on the back. You know, when I was younger, sometimes it'd be like, oh, I put it on the wrong, <laughs> put it on the wrong string. What happens? Um, yeah, that's about good. You know, about a hand length. I'm actually extending my thumb a little bit up now because I want to make sure I have enough, you know, there. So. I definitely want a few wraps. Take that off. Again, straight down into the post. I'll wrap around. Now, I'm having trouble gripping the string, so instead I'm going to fan my hand out. I'm going to run it. Don't You can't make sharp turns, though. You have to really fan your hand out. And I'm holding this, so it's coming down. I'm holding it down with this finger. It's going up over this finger, which I'm pulling up. Right, I'm pulling this finger back and I'm pushing my thumb down, and I'm making this very relaxed curve. If you make too sharp a curve, uh, it metal fatigue, right? So you don't, you don't want that. And of course, I can just give this a little crank, and if I have any problems, I'll just use my left hand here to make sure the windings are going down. If it's tight, the windings will automatically move right into perfect place. If it's loose, they're gonna flip-flop all over the place. And instead of looking like, you know, a nice, you know, tight wire wrap, it's gonna be chaos. And chaos always leads to poor tuning. There we go. I'll give it a little stretch. Here, how much it dropped right there. Yeah, they, you know. Um, I find that nylon strings, this is the B, Clearly, that's the purple. I can feel the I can feel the, the difference in those two. Um, I find that the uh, nylon strings are the worst. Those can take like a couple of weeks to really fully stretch out. It can be really annoying. Um, steel strings not so bad. In a couple of days, really one day if you're really playing. You know, you can usually get them pretty good in just a few hours. Uh, that sounds, that looks about right. And we'll trim it right there. If you're feeling like you want a little extra wrap, just let that out like an extra inch. It's going to go in there and under the string tree. And again, I'm making my little, uh, like little, almost like a little triangle. It's coming under this finger, up over this finger, and then under that thumb. Under that thumb. And now the string tree is helping me because it wants to pull this down. 
So as it wraps, it will wrap its way down. And again, if they separate, don't worry about it. They'll, the tension will be so great that they'll pull themselves together. Pull yourself together, man. And that's another reason why you want a, a, quite a few wraps. The friction of that wire against that post will really minimize the, the, the slippage. And that only happens if the windings are really nice and tight and in a perfect line. Then you get this nice bunched tight, you know, um, nice bunched coil of windings right around that post that really sticks and holds it. All right. So I always, and you should do this too. I'm going with that. All right, that was by ear. Now let's see, I, I do this every time. Let's see how I did. Oh, so close. I'm just, I'm halfway between D sharp and E. So. That's E right there. Close. About half a cent. I mean, uh, about 50 cents off. Now, the other thing about tuning is you always want to bring up to pitch, never down to pitch, ever. And there's a good reason for that. When you go up to pitch, the gears are going a certain way. When you go back, it slackens the gears a little bit. And you can actually, it'll go flat. Also, it slackens between the post and the nut a little bit. And when you're, you're tightening, that seems to be a little bit less. So you could slacken it, and if you don't go below where you are and then back up again, um, I find that, it's, trust me, I've been playing guitar over 40 years. Always bring it up to pitch and never down. You'll save yourself a lot of headache. Also, if, you, if, if the, you know, if the meter gives you a hard time uh, and you're like, you find you're on this uh, pickup, just go to two pickups. So if you have two humbuckers, just go to the middle position. The, this goes by vibration, but um, you'll, you'll find it works better on the tuners that, that go by uh, plug-in. We're getting there. Now, any guesses when I pick this guitar up? How it's gonna be? It's probably gonna be a touch sharp. Any guesses why? Because it's flat on its back and no one play, except for like Robert Randolph, no one plays their guitar like this. They play it straight up. And what's gonna happen is, I. Right now it's resting on here, so there's a tiny bit of pressure pushing on the string. So when I lift it up, let's see how it goes. Yeah, just a tiny bit sharp. That's all right, we're, st we're stretching the strings anyway. Let's, uh, let's try this on. I think I'm plugged in. Am I plugged in? No? Oh, sure. All right, let's get it in tune. It's still stretching a little bit.
stretched out pretty fast. They stretched out pretty fast. And, I mean, it, they're not done, I'm sure. So anyway, there it is. Oh, yikes. Yeah, yeah, sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Um, I might have to take this off and then that off. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was my restring video. I can tell you already, uh, I like the strings, how they feel, because they don't feel coated. I think my biggest complaint about so-called longer-lasting strings was that they didn't feel like strings. They felt like coated strings. And um, that was, I think, my main objection to them. I just didn't like the way they felt. Uh, so, you know, these are treated instead of coated, and they feel like regular strings, and that's already a major plus. Um, the tension feels fine. I wouldn't, you know, it doesn't feel really much different from my normal uh, string that I've been using for, geez, 15, 20 years now. Um, and they sound fine. Uh, we'll just have to see how they last. Right now, no string is going to be going to last forever, uh, just because you have a, a little metal on metal contact. Metal on metal, <laughs> uh, and uh, eventually that will wear the bottom uh, a little flat. And uh, in some guitars, if I really let the strings go, I can actually break the winding a little bit, and uh, that of course kills. It really makes it buzz. Uh, and go, especially if you get two and you get like a section that's literally like rattling around it sort of breaks away from the center core it's sort of rattling around and i've had that happen a few times uh so no these are uh these are these are awesome i uh you know i i worry about so-called long-lasting strings because like i said i don't like i don't like the coating um though in defense of the coated strings um, <coughs> excuse me. I haven't um, I haven't tried them in a very long time. I think the last time I tried the coated string was probably in like the early to mid '90s. Probably like the early '90s. I remember we were in our smaller store and we closed that store in like '92, <laughs> right? Or '93, '92, I think. So uh, yeah, it's been a long time since uh, I've tried them, and I'm sure the the coated strings that use Teflon or whatever they use, it used to be Teflon, um, that uh, that I'm sure they have the process so it's much thinner. God, it, it was so thick, I hated them. I hated them. Especially on the low strings, it felt like almost like a flat wound because it fell in the gaps between the windings. So it just had this odd feel and the high strings would definitely had a, a feel to them that I didn't care for. So, um, but these, don't I don't feel like these just feel like strings these don't feel like you know coated strings or anything like that so all right guys well that's it mission I feel like I got something done today mission accomplished we'll, we'll get it in all can we get it in all three cameras <laughs> once maybe I don't know all right guys uh, thanks for stopping by remember to like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe. <laughs> and until next time, as always, rock on.